Hello, welcome to lecture number three on post hoc testing. Post hoc testing, the word post means after, hoc means this, it's Latin, so it's after this testing. What is it after? It's after you rejected the null hypothesis that all the means are equal. So post hoc testing takes place after analysis variance. It takes place after you reject the null hypothesis with analysis variance. Post hoc testing is only useful if you have no pre-planned comparisons before you start the analysis. And by before you start the analysis, I mean before you start the ANOVA. If you have an idea that you're going to want to compare levels 3 and 4, post hoc testing is not what you want to use. You want to use something that's going to, we're going to discuss in lecture number four. Post hoc testing, again, is only useful if you have no pre planned comparisons. If you don't come into this analysis thinking, okay, I need to determine if the four levels are the same, and if they're different, I need to look at three and four, and whether or not one and two together are different from four, and things like that. So if you have an idea, this is not what you want to do. If you have no clue what you want to test, this is where you can go. Now there's a lot of post hoc testing procedures. We're going to talk about Fisher's LSD test. The LSD stands for Least Significant Difference. We're going to talk about uh, Tukey's HSD test. It follows Fisher's. It does an improvement on Fisher's LSD test. H is Honestly. So Tukey's HSD is Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference test. He was not a nice person. We're then going to look at Duncan's multiple range test, Chaffee's procedure, and if all else, else fails, the Bonferroni procedure. Bonferroni procedure is the easiest to perform. It also is the one that uh, hurts the power of the test most. These are not the only post hoc tests. Uh, SAS has uh, 16 or so available just in the ANOVA procedure. These are the most famous and these are the most useful. Now, the fact that there's so many of them should be an indication that none of these are the best. Or they are the best, but only in certain cases. Or they're the best in certain cases, but we don't know what those cases are. As I explain how to do these calculations by hand in this lecture, I'm going to give you some insight into which of these that I use and when. So, that's the end of this introduction. I guess we're going to start with Fisher's LSD test. The first multiple comparisons test procedure that we're going to look at is Fisher's LSD test, the least significant difference test. And it's based, oddly enough, on multiple t tests. Now, remember how, uh, remember the confidence interval for a t test. It looks like this um, x bar 1 minus x bar 2 probably should make these y's, but they're x's. We can figure it out. Plus or minus a t of alpha over 2, that distributional multiplier, times s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. What Fisher realized is if the ends are the same, that is, if the experiment is balanced, and if we're doing analysis of variance, and these two are going to be the same, remember in the last video we had to test homoscedasticity, then this part is just going to be t of alpha over 2 times the square root of 2 times that s squared over n. Now, in the context of analysis of variance, what is that s? That s is the mean squared error. Either MSE or, in the book, it's MSW for mean squared within. I will be flipping back and forth between using MSW and MSE. They mean exactly the same thing. So be aware of that. There's the confidence interval in this simplified world of analysis of variance. And we're comparing any two. So if any two 
differ by at least this much, then there is a significant difference between these two. Now remember why. This confidence interval tells us that if there is a significant difference, then either this plus that is less than zero, in which case the entire confidence interval is less than zero, or this minus that is greater than zero. The entire confidence interval is above zero. So in other words, if this differs by at least this, then the difference in the population means is going to be significant. This part Fisher called least significant difference. And the key is, if your sample means differ, any pair of sample means differs by at least that much, then the population means are significantly different. So let's do an example. Let's use the meat bacteria example, because we got most of the information already calculated. So I'm going to rewrite this LSD. T of alpha over 2 comes from a table in the back of the book. It's table 2. Alpha is going to be 0.05. T distribution requires the number of degrees of freedom. The number of degrees of freedom here is the same as the number of degrees of freedom in the mean squared within. It's the degrees of freedom error. It's capital N minus T. The entire sample size minus the number of groups. Here that's going to be 8. So T of alpha over 2 with 8 degrees of freedom gives us what value? Ha, I wrote it down. Maybe. 2.3060. Square root. 2 doesn't change, it's just a number. The mean squared within for the meat bacteria example is zero point and the n since this is a balanced design the n is the number of replications within each of the groups here it's three doing our math that comes out to be 0 0.64085. Double check that I did that correctly. So that's the LSD for this experiment. That means if any of the sample means differ by more than that value, those population means are different. If they differ by less than that value, then there, we did not detect a difference in those population means. So let's go ahead and list out all of the sample means. I'll put them here. In order, 7.48, 7.26, 5 5.50, 3.36. This is for mixed gas, vacuum, CO2 and plastic wrap. And those are just the sample means. So now we look. Which of those sample means differ by at least 0.64? Well, these two don't differ, so they're essentially the same. We don't detect a difference in the number of log bacteria for plastic wrapped meat or for carbon dioxide wrapped meat. But we do know that the vacuum is different from either of those and the mixed gas is different from both of those. In other words, we can conclude that vac vacuum has a higher log bacteria count than mixed gas. Vacuum has a lower log bacteria count than either plastic wrap or CO2. We can also conclude that mixed gas has a lower log bacteria count than vacuum then CO2, and then plastic wrap. 
And again, the reason is because the average, the sample mean that we calculated for mixed gas, differs from each of the others by at least this least squared difference part. So really, that's all it is. Strength of Fisher's LSD is it's pretty easy to calculate. That strength kind of goes away the more that we use computers, but I'll keep pointing it out. It's pretty easy to calculate. The drawback, this is just multiple t-tests. And if we recall from exper experimenters one and our undergraduate statistics, the more tests you perform, the more likely it is that you're going to reject a null hypothesis incorrectly, unless you do some sort of adjustment. There's no adjustment here. So this LSD is a very generous test. That's its drawback. You detect more differences than actually exist. And that's a bad thing, usually. Because of that, LSD is not used today. But it's good to teach here because the LSD test leads quite easily into Tukey's HSD test, which is the next one. The second multiple comparisons test that we're going to look at is going to be Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference or HSD test. And Tukey called it the Honestly Significant Difference test because he realized one of the weaknesses of the Fisher LSD test. And Tukey wanted to emphasize that this difference here is honestly significant not just what Fisher gave us. Tookie wasn't exactly Mr. Congeniality. So here's LSD's here's the Fisher LSD test. Value LSD, if the means differ by that much, then the means are significantly different. Tookie made that one adjustment. He said, okay, this is this just comes from multiple t-tests. I'm going to develop a new distribution such that these are not just t-tests, but they're t-tests that are a little bit, with confidence intervals, that are a little bit wider. Because we don't want to reject as often as we, need, as we did with Fisher's LSD test. This is one way, or what we're going to write down here, is one way of making the adjustment for multiple comparisons. And it's one of the best ways in this context. So here's Fisher's LSD statistic. And there's Tukey's HSD statistic. So we're not going to use a T. We're going to use something called a Q statistic, a studentized range statistic. At least that's what Tukey called it. Q is going to, according to the book, the letters T and DF. Okay. Q is going to be a function of alpha. Not alpha over 2, but alpha itself. T, the number of means that you're going to be comparing, the number of groups. And that DFE, degrees of freedom for the error. Degrees of freedom that we use to calculate the mean squared error, the mean squared within. Um, DFE is going to again be the capital M minus T. So this is going to take the place of the T. It's also going to take the place of the 2, by the way, because that 2 just keeps hanging around. Might as well put it inside this distribution to make things look a little bit more simple. Now, here's a question that you should be thinking about. Why does this do a better job? The answer is, because Tukey designed this distribution to do a better job than the t-distribution for this multiple, multiple comparisons environment. And HSD tests, always better than the LSD test. So a little bit, a little bit, more, compli a little bit more complicated to calculate, except we use computers, so it takes just as much time. And the HSD always gives better bounds. So let's do the meat example again, throwing in some of these 
numbers. So the cube distribution comes from table A7. Now looking in the back of the book, table A7, we're going to find out that this value is going to be 4.53. It's an interesting setup, the numbers in the, in the table A7. The numbers in the body, again, are going to be the critical values. That's where you're going to find the 4.53. Uh, 4 numbers along the top are going to be the number of groups you're comparing. And the numbers along the side are going to be the degrees of freedom. But also the numbers along the side are going to be the degrees of freedom plus a couple possible alpha values. So along the top, look for 4. Along the left side, look for 8, and then 0 0.05. And you should find the value 4.53. Again, we use the mean squared error, which the book also calls the mean squared within. This is going to be 0 0.11585. And we're going to divide that by n. N is the number of replications in each group. Again, in this case, that's going to be 3. So we do our calculations, come up with an HSD value of 0 So if any two sample means differ by that much, we conclude that the population means are significantly different. If sample means differ by less than that much, if any two sample means differ by less than that much, we, de we did not detect a difference in those sample means. So let's go ahead and go over to the side again. Here we've got our sample means. look to see which of those differ by at least 0.89. These two do not differ by at least 0.89. So we did not detect a difference between the law, uh, average log bacteria count for plastic wrap and CO2. We did detect a difference with the vacuum. The vacuum average is more than 0.89 away from the CO2 and more than 0.89 away from the PW, plastic wrap, and more than 0.89 away from the mixed gases. And we also detected a difference with the mixed gases. This 3.36 is more than 0.89 away from the vacuum, the CO2, and the plastic wrap. Therefore, we conclude we were able to conclude that the mixed gases had a significantly lower average log bacteria count than any of the others. That vacuum sealing did second best, because you want low bacteria count, did second best, second only to the mixed gases, and significantly better than the other two, plastic wrap and CO2. But we did not detect a significant difference between plastic wrap and CO2 meat packaging in terms of average log bacteria count. Now in this case we came up with the same substantive conclusion as we did when we used the LSD test. Not always going to be the case. Frequently it will be, but not always. So here's the HSD test. Again, it's based a little bit on the t-tests, but it's actually based on an improvement on that t-test got the t-test, but we're also taking into consideration the number of levels, the number of comparisons that we're going to be making. And this Q is the studentized range distribution. And that's it. This is Tukey's HSD test. It's better than the LSD test, period. You should never use the LSD test unless, well, unless your boss tells you you have to. HSD always be, always beats it. 
The third multiple, the third post hoc multiple comparisons testing regime that we're going to look at is the Duncan's MRT, multiple race or inch test. Now we've got the LSD and the HSD up here already. And the main difference between the LSD and the HSD it comes in the distribution. Well, Duncan goes one step further. Duncan uses yet another, or he developed yet another distribution. So the multiple range test difference. I'm not sure why he used R, but he used R as the distribution. R is going to be a factor of the number of levels that the groups are apart. That's new. Alpha, that's not new, everything depends on alpha. And the degrees of freedom for error. And that's not new either. This is the new part. So when we, we were over here, we had plastic wrap at the top, and CO2, then vacuum, then mixed gases. Now think about this. These two are going to be closer, mixed gas and vacuum, guaranteed to be closer than mixed gas and CO2, because we put this in order. And the two that are most likely to be, um, the two that are going to be farthest apart are the mixed gases and the plastic wrap. Tukey and Fisher ignored that information. Duncan said, let's not throw that information apart, Let, uh, away. Let's use that to create a better test. By the way, there's more to this in just a moment. So that number, which in some books that's an R, which gets a little confusing with this R because this indicates the distribution. So this is the number of steps apart of the two levels, of the two means that you're comparing. So if you're comparing vacuum and mixed gas, that number is going to be two. If you're comparing mixed gas and CO2, that number is going to be three. One, two, three. If you're comparing vacuum with plastic wrap, that's going to be three. Plastic wrap with mixed gas, that's going to be four. So Duncan's multiple range test is the first one that actually takes into consideration and uses the information that's there in the ranking. And Oops, I forgot it. And as you might guess, there should be an N here as usual. So the difference between the HSD and the multiple range test is different distribution. But more importantly, Duncan's multiple range test uses more information. It uses this number, how far apart the levels are. More information means the test is usually better. Now here's the problem. Multiple range test is not always better than Tukey's HSD. Tukey's HSD is not always better than Duncan's multiple range test. There's a trade-off between specificity and sensitivity again, between type 1 and type 2 errors. Duncan tends to have higher type 1 errors, but lower type 2 errors. Tukey's HSD tends to have lower type 1 errors, but higher type 2 errors. So the one you use will usually depend upon which error you don't want to make most. If a type 1 error is not a bad thing, it's not a horrible thing, but a type 2 error is, you'll want to go with the Duncan's multiple range test. If, on the other hand, a type 1 error is terrible, but a type 2 error is, you know, whatever, you'll want to go with two keys HSD. Okay, so let's do these calculations. Pretty straightforward. Um, this is in table A8. So go ahead and locate that right now. Um, so I got blue, good. So R of, well, smallest difference is going to be 2. So we're going to have to specify 2 and 0 0.05. And again, degrees freedom for uh, within or degrees freedom E or the ca is capital N minus T, sample size, total sample size minus the number of levels is 8 again in this case. 
according to the table that R of 2, O5, and 8 is 3.26. I'll put that here. And then the square root of the mean squared within. Divided by n. Well, n is 3. I'm using our calculator. Calculator, cell phone. That's 0.11585 divided by 3, square rooted, 0 0.19651128. times 3.26 is 0 0.6406 whatever. Notice I subscripted it with a 2. Because that tells me that any means that are two apart, adjacent, and differ by at least this much, they're significantly different. So let me go ahead and write down what those means are. 7.48, 7 7.26, 5.50, 3.36. 6, so we have detected a difference between these two. We have detected a difference between these two. We did not detect a difference between these two. We do not know if there's a significant difference between these two, and we do not know if there's a significant difference between these two, and we do not know if there's a significant difference between these two, because those require different multiple range values. All we've done here is looked at adjacent values. If those adjacent values differ by more than 0.64, we've detected a difference. Detected a difference, detected a difference, did not detect a difference. Okay, so let's do it for three. Change that to a three, that to a three. Going into the back of the book, three comes out to be 3.39. Calculator. So any that are three, any means that are three apart and differ by at least this much are significantly different. We've detected that difference. So these two are three apart. They differ by at least that much. So we've detected a difference between CO2 and mixed gases. These two levels are three apart. They differ by more than 0.66617. So we can conclude that we've detected a difference between plastic wrap and vacuum. We haven't checked this difference yet. These are four apart. We haven't done that yet. So, move this up to four. Four, the number is 3.47. Calculator. enough, 0.6.2, we'll go with that. So any that are four apart, if they differ by at least 0.682, we've detected a difference. The only ones that are four apart are plastic wrap and mixed gas. Their means differ by at least 0.682, therefore we've also detected a difference between mixed gas and plastic wrap. In terms of average log count of bacteria. So summarizing everything we've done with Duncan's multiple range test, 
We did not detect a difference between those two. We did detect a difference between those. We did detect a difference between those. We did, we did detect a difference between the CO2 and the mixed gas and the plastic wrap and the vacuum. So those have to be in different groups. And we detected a difference between mixed gas and plastic wrap. So again, summarization. Mixed gas is the best. Vacuum is the second best. Plastic wrap and CO2 are the worst. We cannot distinguish between plastic wrap and CO2 in terms of average log bacteria count. Average log count bacteria, whatever we're measuring. Same conclusion. Same substantive conclusion going about it in a different way. So here's the takeaway. And again, computers will do these calculations rather easily. Here's the takeaway. LSD, don't use. If the type 1 error rate is important, but the type 2 error rate not so much, use Tukey's HSD. If the type 1 error rate you don't care about, but the type 2 error rate you do care about, use Duncan's multiple range test. So if beta is important, use multiple range test. If alpha is important, use Tukey's HSD. Otherwise, all of these come essentially from Fisher's LSD test. The difference is they use different distributions. They use different levels of information. For Fisher, it was just multiple t-tests. For Tukey, it was multiple t-tests, but with a different distribution to take into consideration the fact that you're doing multiple tests. And for Duncan, it was those t-tests, taking into consideration you're doing multiple tests, and taking into consideration how far means are apart in terms of rankings. Which ones? If alpha is important, HSD. If beta is important, MRT. And finally, Bonfroni adjustment. I would be remiss if we didn't talk about Bonfroni adjustment. I would also be remiss if I suggested the Bonfroni adjustment would work in this situation. Um, what the Bonfroni adjustment does is essentially the same as Fisher's LSD test, but it changes the alpha. So instead of T of alpha over 2, it's T of alpha over G times 2, G being the number of pairwise comparisons that you can make. And by pairwise comparisons that you can make, here they are. There's 1, there's 2, there's 3, there's 4, there's 5, there's 6. So G is 6 in this case. So instead of looking up alpha over 2, you'll look up alpha over 12 in this case. And still use this to come up with a range. We could, if we want to, we could call it a Bonferroni significant difference. I wouldn't spend time on learning about the Bonferroni in this context. The Bonferroni adjustment always works in terms of controlling alpha. It also is almost always really bad with beta. Bonferroni will elevate your type 2 error rate something you really don't want to do. So again, you can use Tukey or Duncan at this level. Those are the only ones that you really need to pay attention to. And finally, we'll go with the Chaffe procedure. Chaffe is actually kind of interesting. Um, for these three and for the Bonfroni, it was always pairwise comparisons. We compared plastic wrap with CO2. We compared CO2 with mixed gas. We compared vacuum with plastic wrap. Always compared one with the other. And always equals. We're, in each of these, we tested if the mean for plastic wrap was equal to the mean for CO2. And things like that. Chaffe can be used for that. And I've got some... Oh, that's what's missing. There we go. Much better. And 
and a Shafei can be used for that. But it's a waste of everything that Shafei can do. I mean, if you're only comparing pairwise, go back to one of these two. But if your comparison is, hmm, I think that CO2 and plastic wrap are worse than mixed gas. Notice we're comparing three of them at that point. If that's your test that you want to run, Shafe is the one that you would use because these can't handle that. Shafe can. If you're if you want to test if plastic wrap is about the same as the other three combined, CO2, vacuum, and mixed gas, you can do that with Shafe. Can't do that with the others. So Shafe is used when you want to test more complicated hypotheses, more complicated post hoc hypotheses. If you're only doing pairwise and equal, use one of these two. So let's do an example. Say you want to test if the CO2 is the same as the average of mixed gas and plastic wrap. In this context, I don't know why you would want to do that. In some of your contexts, in your own research, you may want to do something like that, if not that itself. Okay, the first step is to write that in the form of a normal symbolic null hypothesis. So this is going to be mu of CO2 is the same as, means equal, the average of Ng and Pw Second step is to get that all on one side so that the symbolic is going to be something equals zero. That wasn't too hard. And the last step is to make sure that everything you're multiplying by is not a fraction. It's a whole number. That last step is just to make calculations a little bit easier. Computer doesn't care, but since I'm the one who has to do the calculations, I care. So to get rid of that 2 on the bottom, multiply 3 by 2. So the first step is to get your null hypothesis in this form. Oops, made a mistake. There we go. In this form. Because the negative sign distributes. So don't forget that. A little quick check that this worked is that if you add up all the coefficients, they have to equal 0. 2 plus a negative 1 plus a negative 1 equals 0. By the way, these coefficients are a's. So a sub 1 is 2, a sub 2 is negative 1, a sub 3 is negative 1. And I forgot the square. There we go. We're there now. Okay, so now here we go. T again is the number of groups. In this example, T is going to equal 3 as always. F sub alpha is going to be the same uh, from the back of the book. Table 4, I believe. Table A4, I didn't write that down. F sub alpha is going to be 4 point, oops, 0, 7. Remember the F distribution requires both a numerator degree of freedom and a denominator degree of freedom. That numerator degree of freedom is going to be DF between. Denominator is going to be DF error. It's going to be, the numerator degree of freedom is going to be T minus 1. 
and the denominator degree of freedom is going to be capital N minus T, or 8. We've used that 8 quite a bit. So that's the F of alpha. This is the sum of all the AI squared. So again, the AIs are the coefficients. 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 6. And now we've got that common factor of mean squared error over n. Mean squared error, is it still up here? 0 0.11585, and again is 3, square root. I'm going to pause the video while I do this calculation, because I know it's going to take me a few tries. And we're back. So this is what I calculated the S statistic to be, 1.68198. Again, no guarantees that I hit the buttons correctly. But this is the value I got. Yours may differ, but double check your arithmetic. So what do we compare that to? We compare that back here to our null hypothesis. We're going to calculate a value based on that. But we can't use mu's because mu's are population parameters and we don't know what the population parameters are. So we're going to use x bars, the sample means. We're going to call that statistic L hat. So this is going to be 2 times x bar sub c minus x bar sub m minus x bar sub p. That's 2 times x bar sub c is 7.26. x bar sub mixed gas is 3.36. And x bar sub plastic wrap is 7.58. X bar of so plastic wrap is 7.48. So let's perform this calculation. And I did make it in red for a reason. 2 times 7.26 minus 3.36 minus 7.48 equals 3.68. So we've got two values up there. We've got the 1.68 and we've got the 3.68. Now the logic for this comparison is going to be exactly the same as the logic for any hypothesis testing you did back in Experimenters 1 or undergraduate statistics. This is your critical value. This is what you observe. If what you observe is farther from zero than your critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. Our critical value is 1.68. This 3.68 is farther from zero than our critical value. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. Here's our null hypothesis. Since we reject that, we conclude that CO2, the average CO2, is not the same as the average of mixed gas and plastic wrap. If it were the same, then this statistic that we calculated, this observed statistic, would be closer to zero than this critical value. It's not. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. So here's the Chaffee procedure. As a reminder, you start with your null hypothesis. 
if this null hypothesis just compares two means, for instance, if this were just the average CO2 is equal to the average of mixed gas, don't use Chaffee. Use Duncan or Tukey. If it's a more complicated hypothesis, you can't use Duncan or Tukey. You have to use Chaffee. So we start with our hypothesis, write it into symbols, get it into the form of, the book calls this part on the left L, in the form of L equal to zero. Remember the coefficients on each of the mu's is an A, A1, A2, A3, and those A's will be more important in the next video when we talk about contrasts. By the way, this is a contrast, but you don't know what that means until you get to the next video. We calculate the critical value. The S value is the critical value. Using Chaffee's formula, T is the number of groups, F of alpha, Numerator degrees of freedom is DF between. Denominator degrees of freedom is DF error. The adding up all the squared coefficients. 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared is 6. And then the fraction mean squared error over N. Square rooted. Gives us this as our test statistic. As our critical value. Because what we observe is greater than our critical value, because what we observe is farther from zero than our critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. In this case, the average CO2 is not the same as the average of Mg and Pw. This little dance between the blue and the red is exactly the same as you have done in previous courses. Calculate a critical value. Usually it comes from going to the table. Calculate your observed statistic. Sometimes this was called the test statistic. If your test statistic is more extreme than your critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. Because this critical value is the edge of what you would expect under normal variation if the null hypothesis were true. So there we go. Those are all the post hoc processes that I'd like you to see in doing them by hand. Your next step is to, if you're an R person, go to the R lecture. If you're a SAS person, go to the SAS lecture. See how to actually do all this in your computer program. But I will warn you, on the midterm, you will need to do one or more of these by hand. You will need to do one or more of these by hand. There you go. And that's the end of lecture three.